You're listening to the Traffic and Conversion Show. I'm your host, Michelle Fernandez, and today I am sharing a common issue many businesses face, overcomplicating the sales funnel. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Are you stuck in the trap of overcomplicating your sales funnel? Well, creating too many steps or making the process too complex, leading to confusion, customer drop-offs, and missed opportunities. Today's customers crave simplicity and a smooth journey from awareness to purchase. So why should you keep your sales funnel simple? Well, I've got three compelling reasons for you. Let's dive in. Okay, so the first one is customer experience because we are all about the customer. You should be loving, loving, loving on your customers. And that means even before they are customers. Make sense? Okay, so complexity can frustrate potential buyers. Simplifying your funnel ensures a delightful user-friendly experience. So when it comes to your sales funnel, Prioritizing customer experience is paramount. The complexity of a convoluted funnel can be a major source of frustration for potential buyers. So this could look like having numerous clicks on your page and extra fields on your signup forms. By simplifying your funnel and minimizing unnecessary steps can significantly enhance the customer experience and boost those conversion rates, which is what we're all about, right? You're essentially rolling out that red carpet for customers, offering them a delightful user-friendly user experience that makes their journey as enjoyable as possible. Okay, then let's talk about those conversion rates because in 2024, I hope that you have it somewhere on your KPI starting this month, right? That um, no matter what month you're listening to this, or even what year you're listening to this, that you should always be looking to increase your conversion rates in your sales funnels, right? Even if it's by 1%, right? 1% over time, right? It's like that compound effect could make this huge difference in your business. Well, by doing that, simplicity plays this pivotal role in driving those conversion rates upward, okay? So the logic is pretty straightforward. The more steps in your funnel, the more opportunities there are for potential customers to drop out or abandon their journey with you, right? Abandon cart. By streamlining your funnel and reducing those unnecessary steps, you've effectively minimized the drop-off points, right? So it's, what happens is it increases the likelihood of visitors becoming customers. And that's what we're really looking for. And also think about this. If they're like, oh my gosh, they're making me jump through all these hoops or they're putting me through the ringer. A lot of times people are like, oh, whatever, I'm just going to move on, right? So, or they think of beyond this. Oh my gosh, if they're making me do all this now, how many more things is it going to be like when we start to work together. So think about that, okay? And am I saying that specifically could be for lead magnets, that could also be for any um, uh, self-liquidating offers. I was gonna call it an SLO, but then I thought maybe some of you don't know what SLO is. So a self-liquidating offer where you see like there's maybe a low ticket offer and then there's the checkout page with a bump and then there's a one-time offer, an upsell, right? <clears throat> that should be what an, an SLO is, right? But then a lot of people have this whole like another upsell and then another upsell and then you're trying to get out and then now you got this downsell. And so I signed up for... I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's like a place where you can order meats from. So like steaks, chicken, pork, that kind of thing. Um, butcher box, I think it was called. And I was happy with it. And then all of a sudden they just started sending us like a whole box of like the same type of meat. It, it didn't end up going well. So I wanted to cancel. So I go in the thing and, you know, they want to make sure you want to cancel. They want to offer you maybe a discount or like let like a lower ticket item. That's fine, right? Because maybe I would want to stay and give them another try. However, I could not get out of the thing. I kept saying, no, no, yeah. And then it just, I'm like, is there ever an end? And then I'm like, if I bounce from the page, 
Does that mean they're not going to cancel my account? So I was so aggravated. And even if I was considering staying and or coming back, there would be no way I would do that because I was, I was thinking like, if I ever want to leave again, what is this going to look like for me? So it ended up being a horrible experience. Needless to say, my interaction, them not getting my business or other business that I was referring to them, okay? So just think that and think beyond what is happening even beyond this particular transaction, okay? Okay, the third one is time efficiency. A simple funnel means quicker decision making, okay? So time efficiency is a valuable benefit of simplifying your sales funnel. By reducing the complexity, you're not only saving time for your team in managing the funnel, right? Or even building the funnel, right? And optimizing the funnel, but also making the customer's journey faster and more efficient. A streamlined funnel really leads to quicker decision making for customers or potential customers as they navigate through the stages more rapidly and potentially higher sales volumes, okay? If that didn't make sense when you thought time saver, what? Yes, you want people to make a decision and make it fast. So let's get practical. How can you simplify your sales funnel? Okay, I'm going to share with you a couple of actionable strategies. So the first is clear value proposition. Okay, we talk about this all the time. Whenever you go to build anything, whether it's your, we usually talk about this more on your sales funnel where you're trying to communicate the value. So then they could say, oh yeah, I have no problem spending $10,000, $50,000 for this, right? Well, we want to think about this across everything, even from your free lead magnet. Okay. So free to super high ticket. So communicate the value clearly and concisely right from the start. Make it easy for your customers to understand why they need the freebie, the product, the service. A clear value proposition is the foundation of a successful funnel, period, okay? So it's crucial to communicate your value proposition clearly and succinctly from the very beginning of that journey, right? And think about when we're talking about making the decisions, right, quicker, if you're clear on your messaging and you're able to like uh, say this value, think about how much they'll be like, oh my gosh, yes, oh my gosh, yes, yes. I don't, I don't even need you to talk anymore because here's my credit card, okay? That's the way you want it to be. So your customer should easily grasp why your product or service is valuable to them and why they should choose you over your competitors. So when your value proposition is crystal clear, it piques the interest, it builds the trust, and it sets the stage for a more engaging and effective sales process. So essentially, it answers the fundamental question in your customer's mind. Why should I care? Right? The second thing, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is reduce your steps. So every additional step is an opportunity for potential customers to drop off. So in the quest for a successful sales funnel, the mantra less is more holds true. Reduce steps means a simplified customer journey and that is crucial for boosting those conversion rates, okay? So we're all about the conversions. Hey, maybe your word for 2024 should be conversions, just saying. Okay, so by streamlining the process and minimizing unnecessary hurdles, you make it easier for your prospects to progress smoothly through the funnel, increasing the chances of them becoming these loyal customers. In essence, simple, the simplicity in the customer journey can significantly impact your bottom line. Then we're talking about personalization. You know, I love me some personalization and it's really the secret sauce for any successful sales funnel. By tailoring your content and offers to each customer's unique needs and preferences, you create a more engaging and relevant experience. So personalization not only makes customers feel valued, but also guides them seamlessly along the funnel. So when prospects receive content and offers that resonate with their specific interests and pain points, they're more likely to move forward in their journey with you as their guide and convert, right? You want them to convert. So uh, in today's world, I would definitely say, and I've done a few episodes on personalization and we can drop, 
drop the related episodes in here. I, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but personalization is a powerful tool for enhancing the customer experience and driving successful outcomes in your sales funnel. So if I could give you a quick example, so let's just say on the, the opt-in page or the first page, you ask just one simple question. So I always use ads as an example. I don't know. It's just on top of mind, right? So it's like, let's say my lead magnet is about ads and I'm saying, hey, where do you struggle most? Is it your targeting? Is it your, co is your messaging? Or is it the tracking, like the data? Okay. So they answer one of those, they choose one of those three, enter their name and email, and when they click, it will go the next step if I was selling something or if I wanted them to get more value, whatever it is, would lead directly to one of those three things. So if they said data, then that next step would be shown something about data, whether them, again, for them to buy, or more value, maybe it's podcast episodes to listen to, maybe it's a Facebook Live you did, whatever, or Instagram Live now, whatever that looks like for you, think about how vital that would be because now they just told you what they're struggling with. They told you what their problem is and you're literally handing them the solution on a silver platter, right? That is like, I can't, I can't explain what personalization is from here forward more clearer than that, right? So again, that should definitely be something that you put on your list of things to do um, sometime this year is definitely get personalization in place. Okay, then we're talking about data-driven decisions. I am all about the data. That is kind of my motto is that we create predictable growth powered by data-driven marketing because this is what we need to do. Deci data-driven decisions are the linchpin of a well-optimized sales funnel. By harnessing analytics, you gain invaluable insights into your customer's journey. Now, data can pinpoint bottlenecks and reveal precisely where customers are getting stuck or they're dropping off, right? So armed with this information, you can make informed and strategic improvements to your funnel. It's like really having a roadmap that guides you to the most effective route. Now, data decisions enable you, if I can even say it, to fine tune your processes, eliminate those friction points, and ultimately drive higher conversions. So in today's data-rich environment, meaning you can get analytics everywhere. And if you are on a platform, whether it be for your emails, whether it be for your website, your landing page, if you are not able to click, find the data, okay, let me just reframe that because I do have customers that are like, I can't find it and it's there. They just can't find it. So if that's you, figure out where to find it, right? Make it easier, bookmark the page, whatever you need to do, record yourself a video, write it on your memos. This is where I go to step one, two, and three to find the information. If your platform does not have the availability for you to find out, hey, how many unique users did I have click on this page? How many were converting? In this specific uh, specific time period, you need to change platforms. I'm just going to say it. Yes, will it be a pain to migrate stuff over depending on how many funnels and emails and all that kind of stuff that you have? Yes, it, if you... Put it in those terms. Will it be a pain? Yes. Will it be a project that you should take on? Absolutely, because it will pay off in leaps and bounds going forward when you have this data. I built out a funnel for someone in Kajabi, not afraid to say it. And I checked back in with her and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Just wanted to see how everything's doing. And she's like, I, I don't even know what's going on. I can't find my analytics and I think they're here and it, it's just so difficult. And she couldn't find all the things that she needed. That my friend means it's time to go. And even when I did go in there, things were not only hard to find, but it did not give her the intricate data that she did need, okay? So in today's data rich environment, yes, you can find data. There are platforms out there that you can be using. I highly recommend it because I just partnered with a company that I'm opening my own um, platform out there. So be on the lookout for that. And I just might drop it in the show notes in here. So take a look at that. So leveraging your analytics is key to unlocking the full potential of your sales funnel. Okay, so let's talk about testing because this goes into what I was just talking about with the data, right? 
So as we test and continuously test, that's really the lifeblood of a high-performing sales funnel. It involves a commitment from you <laughs> to always be refining and optimizing your approach. So split testing or A-B testing, as it's sometimes called, and ongoing analysis allows you to experiment with different strategies, different messaging and designs to see really what resonates best with your audience, okay? So back to even the platform, does your platform allow you to split test? This is something, this capability is something that you need to have. And, and you might be saying, well, I'm really not at that level. Okay, it's time for you to step up your game, right? You're in business to make money and to serve a bunch of people. So you need to have the tools in place that allow you to do these things. Because then later when you're looking at other people and you're like, wait a minute, how did we both start at the same place? And now they're up here. How do these people, these influencers that have these business that you want, how do they just keep getting better and better? They are doing these things. They have the tools, they have the team, they have the knowledge, they know where to find, they're very resourceful to figure this stuff out, okay? So when you're split testing or constant or continuously testing, you are going to be evaluating and adapting, and then you can identify which elements of your funnel are working, which ones need improvement, right? And this dynamic approach not only keeps your funnel fresh and engaging, but it also ensures that you can swiftly adapt to changing customer preferences and market trends, okay? So overcomplicating your sales funnel is really a pitfall that you should avoid at all costs. I just gave you some really good tools and they're not complicated to implant, uh, implement. I know that a lot of people, they just make marketing so much more difficult than it really needs to be, unfortunately, because it just seems like, uh, but when you get in, it is easier to do it. And once you start seeing the numbers, it becomes fun. It becomes this game where you're like, okay, how can I get more data? And then seeing what works and what doesn't. And let me just tell you something. <clears throat> you could put something out there. Is it scary sometimes? Heck yeah, it is, right? And then it's like, okay, but if something doesn't go well, you can always turn it off for a minute, figure it out, and then go back. OK, no one's going to die. It's not the end of the world. The world is not the sky is not going to fall. OK, simplicity is the key to a successful customer journey. So by focusing on the clear value proposition, reducing unnecessary steps and personalizing your repo approach. Oh, we got to use the data to make informed decisions and continuously test and optimize. You can definitely streamline your funnel and achieve better results. I appreciate you so much for being here with me today. And if you found this information helpful, definitely um, leave a review and share it with your peers, right? Let them know about this episode. And always stay tuned for more valuable insights to help you enhance your sales funnel and boost your business's success. Until next time, let's grow your business together.